Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Uh, Clean Machine is an all-natural plant-based fitness nutrition company. I look for the best that nature has offer and bring it to the market where the companies won't because it's too much information, but information is what I do. And you've come to the source for information right here. We're going to be looking at a cool study because um, uh, for some of you will probably know that uh, I dealt with uh, severe chronic um, depression when I was younger in my 20s. Lost my mother, my father, my brother at, a, at an early age, and it, and it sank me into a really bad depression. Um, and it took me to a really bad place, but I was fortunate enough to find someone to help talk me through that. But when I did, I shifted my diet. And as I shifted my diet to a mostly plant-based diet, actually to go in completely vegan in one day, I felt amazing uh, benefits, not only to my physical health, but my mental and emotional states remarkably improved. And so, you know, I was a, a biopsych uh, major in college and I was looking at different neurochemicals that improved mood and behavior, obviously serotonin it being a big target for uh, not only the uh, natural, but the medical communities because of its influence on overall um, uh, improvements in uh, depression. But uh, for a lot of people, depression can be compounded uh, or worsened by anxiety levels. And some people just deal with anxiety at, at a big level altogether. So when I came across this study, it was very interesting because they've shown a plant-based diet and plant-based nutrition has many studies out there showing improvements in uh, overall um, mood and um, behavior, especially alleviating depression. So that's been kind of well established that a plant-based diet can positively impact depression, but they really hadn't looked at anxiety and how plant-based diet and or exercise influence uh, that. So here is the actual study. I'm gonna go ahead and put it up on the screen for those of you watching on Facebook and social media or later on YouTube. I'm going to add this to the comment section. This is the study I'm going to be uh, covering. I'll put it up in the, on the screen. But for those of you watching on Amazon, um, uh, I'll go ahead and read the study out to you. So uh, the study is titled The Effects of Exercise on Symptoms of Anxiety in Primary Care Patients, a Randomized Controlled Trial. Um, this is really Im important because uh, as the as the writers or the authors of the study say, previous studies of physical exercise and depression have, have shown clear symptom improvements. However, a clear picture of how people with anxiety are affected by exercise has been lacking up until now. And this uh, present study is described as one of the largest to date. So it's, it's really exciting. They're, they included 286 patients with anxiety syndrome. Half of the patients have lived with anxiety for at least 10 years. So this is kind of really prolonged, pronounced uh, chronic anxiety. The average age was 39 and 70% of the patients were women. Um, as women tend to deal with anxiety a little bit higher than men, but it's in both genders for sure. Uh, the two groups, they split them in two. Uh, one had either moderate exercise and the other had strenuous exercise. And this is one of the things I found pretty fascinating about this particular study is that they did divide it this way. Usually they just say, does exercise help? What they actually looked at is, is there a progression? Is there a gradient? Is there a tendency towards uh, more improvement if there is a difference in the actual exercises themselves? That was interesting and that was key because what they found actually bore that out. So here's the results of the study. They said there was a significant intensity trend for improvement. Um, that is, the more intensely the patients exercised, the more their anxiety symptoms improved. That's a direct quote from the article written about the studies from the authors of the studies. So that was amazing that there was actually the more intensely they worked out or the more intense their exercise was, the better the improvements or trend towards better improvements 
were for actual results in reducing anxiety. So this is really important because uh, I talk about, often talk about the health benefits of intense training. My, my three tenets that I always uh, tell everyone, uh, you know, when I'm asked, what are the three things that you feel get you the best results? And, and they are real simple. One, consistency, which is training on a regular basis. Two, intensity, which is putting good amount of effort in it. I'm going to talk about that towards the end of the study, how you can intensify your workouts and do it very safely and effectively without having to spend a lot of time in the gym or without having to risk your joints by using excess weights. So intensity, consistency, and nutrient density. So when you are doing intense exercise, your body is using more nutrients to heal, to repair, to recover, to, to feed and fuel the intensity of your workout. So do it is necessary for you to increase your nutrition uh, correspondent with your increases in the intensity of your exercise. Um, so what I want to talk about next is a couple other studies that were really cool that actually complement this research. And the next study, and I'll, I'll read it out to you and put it up on the screen for those of you who want to look it up yourself and put it in the chat box so people can refer to it after. It's up on the screen too as well. The study is titled The Role of Habitual Physical Activity and Arterial Stiffness in Elderly Individuals, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. So this is interesting that they looked at meta-analysis. This is a meta-analysis study. So it's looking at a, a whole bunch of different studies and, and seeing if there is a similar thread between or similar results between the studies. And sure enough, they found consistency in there. And this is what they, uh, they said in the study. I'm going to read this as a direct quote uh, from the study. Um, Habitual physical activity has a favorable effect on health that can reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, some cancers, and depression, which we talked about in the previous study. Uh, reports show that physically active persons with moderate amounts of physical activity resulted in 20% lower risk. But here's the cool thought, the, the thread in this, and I'll continue the rest of this quote directly from the study, while higher amounts of physical activity result in approximately a 30% lower risk. So this is really cool. It's showing the more you exercise or the intensity of your exercise or the quantity of your exercise or the frequency of your exercise really matters in health outcomes. You're talking about a 10% difference just by changing how often and how intensely you work out. I mean, that's incredible. If I, if I told you I could add 10% of your life just by telling you to work out a little bit harder, would you work out a little bit harder? I work out hard anyway because I love it, because I enjoy it, because it makes me feel so good. But this is for your health too as well. So this is really important. Now, the last study actually shows it in a physical graph, which I like because you know, there's nothing better than a than a image to set the, set the stage. So let me go ahead and put this last study up here. The third study I'm going to uh, refer to is let's see, did I copy and paste too much? I think it did. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, this, the title of the study, for if you want to look it up and Google it, is Physical Activity and Cardiovascular Disease. And this one looked at uh, cardiovascular disease, which is vascular disease, which can include uh, diabetes, hypertension, stroke, and heart attacks, or coronary heart disease, CHD, instead of just CVD. So how much is enough? Now, that was a big question because they're actually looking at gradients, like how much, how much of the exercise actually increases in benefits. So here's what they found. There is enough evidence to recommend that healthy adults, that any activity is beneficial, beneficial, excuse me, and this is a direct quote, and that more activity is even better. I'm going to actually go ahead and put that quote right up on the screen, and then I'm going to pull up the graph that shows this 
and illustrates it so well. Um, and you have three studies like this, one looking at um, arterial stiffness, which is how stiff are your arteries? If they're not flexible, remember exercise dilates those blood vessels and then you shrink them back down after exercise. So this kind of stretches out your arteries and makes them flexible. What happens is when you're inactive, they become stiff, they don't turn. And that's where hypertension comes in because it's blood pressure. If they're in a small state and you need blood, like you get excited about something, your blood vessels won't dilate like they should to allow more blood flow to come through. So increasing that vasodilation will not only give you a pump, which is what you get from, from exercise, but it will also help you with your overall health, which could actually later in life um, prevent from, well, not prevent, because we're not talking about preventing diseases, but actually uh, reduce your risk for cardiovascular disease and events like this. So um, let me go ahead and put that up there. There is enough evidence to recommend to healthy adults that any activity is beneficial and that more activity is even better. So this is really important. Uh, I wanna show you the graph, I'm gonna pull it up here in just a second. Uh, for those of you watching on Amazon, sorry you're not be able to see this graph, but you can check it out later on YouTube, um, at Clean Machine Online at YouTube. So um, this graph actually is pretty astounding because it shows the quintiles of activity you know, divided into five different groups, you know, the one with the least amount of activity, more activity and increasing all the way to five. And the fifth one actually had the greatest change between quintiles, between the different groups. The greatest change came from the most activity level. So the biggest health benefits were from those who most use the most exercise, that's greater intensity, greater frequency, or greater volume of exercise. So let's talk about how we can accomplish that and do it in a safe way, because some of us have physical challenges uh, that limit us from being able to do exercise intensely. Some of us are just starting out. Some of us are elderly and, and, and don't have the, the muscle or the strength or the endurance yet built up. So there are different ways that you can go about this without having to just add more weight. That is one way to increase intensity by adding more weight. But to be honest, that's not sustainable. Just keeping adding weight eventually is gonna break down tissues, especially tendons and joints, but can also tear muscle tissues and stuff as well. So I'm not a fan of just adding more weight. Uh, I personally don't work out with any more weight. I used to work out with uh, heavier and heavier weights uh, to try to get gains, but now I found I can get, you know, I'm, I'm turning 59, right, in, in a month. And uh, there's, there's no reason to add that kind of weight and that kind of stress uh, to your tissues that will just add wear and tear on your joints. I don't want joint replacement when I'm older. Um, I don't want joint breakdown or arthritic conditions when I'm older. I want to maintain my joints. I'm you know, just about to go into my 60th year and I want to enjoy it and enjoy my retirement eventually too as well. So there are other ways to increase with uh, increase exercise intensity and one is volumes. And I just came out of two weeks of doing high volumes. So what I personally do, and, and remember, I am a seasoned trainer. I've been training for 30 years. So I'm not suggesting this for everyone. Find out what works right for you and find out the weights that work right for you. But this is something that you can try even with lighter weights. I do. I, I cut my weight in about half to about down to 40%, which is actually less than half of the weight that I would normally work out with. And I do five sets of 20 reps. So that's 100 reps for each exercise. So um, I will do chest, I'll do incline, decline, and flat, and then include some flies. In that, I will do five sets of each one of those four to five different exercises. I will do five sets of 20. So that's 100 reps times five exercises. That's 500 reps. So you can see what kind of volume that is you get such massive blood flow. Plus, you're working out at a cardio level. So you're increasing endurance uh, as well, and you're burning much more caloric load than when you do a six to eight or 10 or 12 rep uh, standard workout. 
So this is a great way to burn calories, to increase definition, because this really pulls up the definition, the cuts and the, uh, the different uh, uh, def defined angles in your muscles, really brings that up because you're increasing the volume of the reps. Um, so that's one way, increasing the volumes of the reps and sets. Number two is increase your time under tension. King Tut, T-U-T, time under tension. So time under tension means how long that muscle for each rep is engaged in weight. So normally most people would bring that weight up as fast as they can and then just drop it back down, right? There is no tension happening when you're dropping the weight. You're just letting gravity take the weight back down to the starting position. And when you're going up, your jerking tendency uh, will actually increase inertia and inertia will move the weight up partially for you. If you slow that rep down in both directions, concentric and eccentric, now you've increased the time, the whole rep is under tension. When you slow that down, up and down, the, the muscle is under tension the whole range instead of throwing it up and then dropping it down. That's where you can get so much more stress onto the muscle and increase the response, which is your adaptation, your adaptation to muscle. I see guys in there all the time, they're pumping, pumping, pumping fast and you know, throwing big weights around and using the body and swinging the weights. And I'm like, wow, they're barely engaging their muscle. They're putting all that time and energy in the gym and they're really not actually stressing the muscle. That's where the growth comes from. That's where the strength comes from. You know, you're just missing out. Why even show up in the gym like that? Is it to, you know, for your ego? Or are you trying to build your ego or your, or your body? So when you slow those reps down, it may look weird to people as they see you going really slow up and really slow down. But I guarantee you, you will feel soreness like you have never sore because you're putting so much stress on the body. They've shown that the eccentric, the down motion can actually be more anabolic, more muscle building than the contraction. <laughs> now, speaking of contractions, uh, uh, there's another way to do contractions, what I call max contract. So when you work out, you get to a maximum contract. You can't contract anymore, a maximum contract position. And this will make the muscle really tense and stuff. Now, when you tensify the muscle in that strong contraction, you're actually squeezing out an omega-6 called arachidonic acid. That arachidonic acid goes into the bloodstream when you basically squeeze it out of the muscle. And it goes into the bloodstream and triggers the body to say, hey, pro-inflammation, this thing is being maxed out, contract. Let's heal, repair, grow this muscle tissue. So that's what's called a max contract. So when you maximally contract it, hold it there for a three count if you can. And when you're in that maximum contract, contract position, the muscle is just squeezing this out. That's where you're maximally stimulating growth too. Again, you can do far less reps than somebody doing eight to 10 to 12 reps. When you do this max contract and hold it in that position, you are way stimulating the muscle growth. You are causing that uh, pro-inflammatory state that stimulates the muscle to respond. These are the tips and tricks that you can get twice as much muscle gains, twice as much definition, twice as much results than the same person spending the same amount of the time doing the gym the old fashioned way, which is throwing the weights around, trying to think you're looking big by throwing heavy weights. And that's really not getting you anywhere. I see the guys look exactly the same every time they come in the gym, doing the same three sets of 10 reps and going as heavy as they can that they have to cheat all over the place and doing sloppy weight reps and stuff and, and getting nowhere. They, they look like they hardly even work out. And then here I am doing these super slows or volume training with light weights. And, you know, <laughs> I'm putting on 17 inch arms for a 59 year old guy. That's a 36 year vegan. Come on. This is, this is how you can do smart training, get the most out of your workouts. And of course, the third thing is nutrient density. So, Getting the body to have the right nutrition in there can really help with the intensity too. And that's why I designed and even named uh, our pre-workout N10s. So 
what is in intent? And that's a good question. It's four actual different ingredients that are all clinically proven in published human studies. And they're all dosed exactly as what was used in the study. I see so many pre-workouts there, out there with like 500 milligrams of creatine in it, which does nothing. Oh my God, it's, that's not gonna do a thing. Or, or you know, a, a gram of arginine when, when the dosage is three grams or citrulline at two grams, when the dosage used in the study is six grams. It's like, God, these underdose, because they're just trying to save money and be cheaper so that you'll buy it. Well, I don't want to be cheap. I want to be effective. <laughs> if you're ready for a truly effective pre-workout, then this is what you'll do. You'll do products that have ingredients that have published human research, are dosed exactly the way they were in the research, and then you can be more comfortable that you're going to get the results that you do. So one of the key ingredients in N10s is a ingredient that's patented, multi-award winning, and um, it is called S7. It's a nitric oxide booster. Remember, we were talking about that vasodilation where when you exercise, you stretch out the muscles and it dilates. We well, can actually assist your body with actual plant nutrition that helps your body increase that dilation even better. That gets blood flow to the muscle, so those nutrients, the protein, the amino acids, the BCAs, all those can get to the muscle easier and waste products can move away from the muscle faster. So getting that. So this, this S7 is seven plant ingredients, plant extracts that are clinically proven to boost nitric oxide for 230%. And that's up to three hours of nitric oxide boost, which is amazing because that can give you health benefits as well. But one of the wonderful things I like about Intense is when we're talking about anxiety and the first studies we're talking about anxiety is caffeine can actually exacerbate or increase or, or, or cause more anxiety because it increases cortisol. So I intentionally only put a low dose of amount of uh, caffeine in this uh, from green coffee extract, only 100 milligrams. And the reason I did that is that so uh, people who are uh, more sensitive to caffeine could probably still use this, but also so that you don't stress out that body. That spike in cortisol is not a great thing. Cortisol is, is definitely not so good, but it's the stress hormone. And that stress hormone can increase anxiety. So what's cool about this is the Zynamite replaces that because the Zynamite and this is the studies have shown that zynamite, uh, which is a mango leaf extract, actually activates brain waves that are almost identical in pattern to caffeine, but they do it without stimulating the central nervous system. So you get all the brain effects of caffeine with all, without all that nervous central nervous system stimulation that causes that cortisol to spike and causes that an extra anxiety that you don't need. So I love Zynamite because it gives me that brain buzz. It gives me that focus so I can go in there and just smash the workout without having to load my body with full of caffeine. This is a non-caffeine source that acts like caffeine, but just in the brain where you really want it and need it. Not in the body, it'll give you all that nervousness system and stimulate that central nervous system, produce all that cortisol, which then can actually interfere with testosterone, increase body fat gains, tear up muscle tissue. You don't want that cortisol level. And speaking of cortisol, cell block 80 also has ashwagandha in it. Now this is the clinically proven KSM 66 ashwagandha, the most studied ashwagandha on the planet. And that's why I put it in here. We boosted up the amount of ashwagandha to be exactly the same used in the study. And here's what's cool about this. Not only is it helpful in boosting testosterone and getting the body to actually recover faster, drop body weight, but not cause those negative side effects of elevated testosterone, like extra estrogen or DHT, which you don't want. But here's the cool thing. KSM was used in a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized trial and shown it reduced depression, anxiety, and stress scale score by 72%. That's awesome.
So for those of you who have anxiety, this can actually help improve sleep, help improve thyroid function, help improve your overall hormone profile, but also reduce anxiety and depression levels by 72%. Published human study, double blind placebo controlled, RCT, the gold standard. And this is awesome. And that's why I make products like this using ingredients like KSM, like Zynamite, uh, like Rip Factor, all these backed by published human clinical trials that improve not only your chances to gain better results in the gym by increasing your intensity, but also improve health benefits. That's the way real fitness nutrition should work. Fitness for your emotional state, fitness for your physical state, and fitness for your mental state as well. All in these ingredients. That's why I'm very careful about what I choose to go into each product. And yes, they're more expensive because you know I'm paying for, for uh, ingredients that were actually used in the studies. Not somebody else's cheap ashwagandha from, from China that you know may be totally different in its uh, chemical outmake. And you know somebody else is saying, oh, we've got ashwagandha in it too. And it's 50 milligrams instead of 300. It's not the one that's standardized. It's not organic like ours. It's not the one used in the study and you don't get the results. So don't fall for that, that you know, people just sprinkling you know, stuff in there and saying, oh, the study says this and we, we've got it in our, in our product. No, make sure it's the ingredient used in the study, that it's dosed exactly as you see in the study. And I always put those studies up there so you can see it for yourself. That shows you that real people in the real world are getting these results and there's the results study for you exact same ingredient, exact same dosage, clinically dosed so that you get the best results too. So this is a good way where we can use these products, use these plant-based ingredients to help us get better results in the gym, reduce our stress, anxiety, reduce our depression levels, so improve our mental health, our emotional health, and our physical health, and get better results all in one. That's what I want for you. It, the best in nutritional fitness and in uh, in supplementation. That's why I bring these products because they're not. You don't have ashwagandha in our daily food supply. It's just not there. You know when people say, "Oh, I only do whole foods." All right, well that's great. But if you do have uh, are experiencing depressive states or anxiety or stuff like this, the ashwagandha in this can actually help. Why not include that herb? So what if it comes in a capsule? You can take the capsule out if you want. It's still a dried herb. What's the difference than eating kale chips? There is no difference. That's a dried herb. And you know, let's get beyond the dogma and look at plants and how they can help us. Is there real research in published human studies showing they're effective? If yes, why not bring them into your life and add the benefits to your health? Why not? It's there. It's nature. <laughs> these plants want to be used. I feel these plants want to be used to help our human health. That's why I try to bring them to you where other companies won't. I hope you enjoyed this. There's a lot of good research out there. I'm glad to see some research really looking at the intensity and the uh, volume of uh, and consistency of exercise and how it improves health. It can improve your microbiome. I got a great study coming up on that, how exercise improves our microbiome, increases the good bacteria in our guts, and increases the production of actual butyrates. Butyrates are anti-inflammatory. They help us recover after workout. But guess what butyrates are made from? Plant fiber. So exercise and plants, once again, results in better recovery. That's why I built clean machine to keep this body clean, this amazing machine clean, but do it with plant-based fitness nutrition. So you can get the best benefits, enjoy the best health, enjoy the best life for you. Hope you enjoyed this. If you do like it, give it a thumbs up, share if you can. Let's get this information out to more people. I sincerely want to help other people. I suffered. I almost took my own life twice because of chronic uh, depression, suicidal depression. I want to help other people. I am not allowed to say these things uh, actually support uh, disease states because the FDA doesn't allow that. 
but I can show you the studies that do. And these studies are great. It's nice to see these research studies coming out to, that, that address some of these things. So remember, nothing in this uh, this um, is this video is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Thank you for watching. Tune in for next week. We'll have some more great info for you talking about the research, health and nutrition benefits. And I've got a cool uh, guest coming up uh, that is doing some really good things um, in the health and nutrition space too as well. Thanks everyone. Have a great week.